No, I didn't wave her around because I'm inebriated. I'm just old. <laughs> and I rejoice in being old. I believe the scripture. And I believe uh, Paul when he said, <clears throat> Rejoice always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always. No time when you do not rejoice. Now, joy runs uh, through the Bible, maybe more than we realize. In the Old Testament, joy is found in uh, behavioral uh, associations. When you read the Old Testament and you find the people in, in enjoyment, all right, rejoicing, it's always in a, uh, uh, not always, but usually, mostly, in a community situation, the good times, the happy times, the joyful times in the Old Testament were meals, festivals, singing, dancing, groups, all of them together and enjoying, remembering what God has done and the joy that he furnishes. And uh, Proverbs speaks of the love of parents for a spouse, children, Friends, in the Old Testament, joy is associated with the association that people had with each other. Uh, there's wisdom there, too. I remember one verse that always uh, stayed with me from Proverbs. <coughs> and it goes like this. Uh, <laughs> the word is spit fitly spoken is like apples of gold in baskets of silver. That's something to think about. A word well spoken, a kind word, the kind you've been sharing today with each other and with me. Oh, <clears throat> joy was known in the Old Testament, but uh, it was always in, mostly in association in group gatherings that they really, what, uh, seems to me like it would be called happiness, joyful. It was great times. And uh, changed. All of a sudden, an announcement, an angel said to the shepherds, I bring you good news of a great joy. You have a savior. God in his love and concern for you has given his son Jesus Christ, and he is your personal Savior. Oh, my. Did the source of joy then become something uh, that caused the New Testament to be permeated, all the writings in the New Testament, to be permeated with the joy of Jesus Christ and the love of God that prompted that the most Gracious gift the world has ever or will ever know. Uh, <clears throat> that, that joy was uh, inaugurated really by the coming of the Messiah. Uh, the good news announced. A joy that is, characterizes the kingdom of God. And when a joy is characterized by the kingdom of God, there is no more complete joy than that, and that we find in Jesus Christ. So I fulfill and completely abiding in Christ is a secret of it. There's a verse of scripture that just every once in a while, many times through the week, reminds me of who I am and who I understand I am to God. It's this very simple verse. Jesus said, he who lives and believes in me will never die. To live in Christ, to live in his spirit, means that we have life with him forever. Abiding in the joy of the fulfillment of Christ means we have reason to rejoice. I think maybe John writing in Revelation kind of summed it up best for us. 
He said, joy is complete and Jesus Christ is exalted when multitudes sing hallelujah, let us rejoice. When's the last time you said hallelujah? Or when you heard it? Well, maybe it was in a piece of music. Uh, maybe it was the uh, last time you said it, if you sang the chorus to, to the old song, Revivers Again. You know, the chorus, you remember the chorus? Sure you do. <laughs> the joy of knowing Christ and saying hallelujah, let us rejoice. Uh, I need your help right now for just a moment. And you may not be willing, I hope you are. It won't cost you anything but a little breath. <clears throat> when you hear the word hallelujah, what do you think? Well, there's no greater way to express a joy. So what I'm going to ask us to do, and let's see if we can raise the roof a little. I'm going to ask us all on account to say hallelujah, but I don't want a hallelujah. I want a hallelujah, all right? <laughs> Everybody now, it won't hurt long. Might it make you feel good. On the count of three, we're going to say hallelujah. One, two, three. All right, that's great. Ah, I felt pretty good, didn't I? Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the exaltation of multitudes <laughs> will sing, Hallelujah, let us rejoice. Paul wrote to the Philippians, and in the fourth chapter, which was read earlier, uh, <clears throat> let it be known that the the Lord is here. Remember how it goes? Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your forbearance be known. What does that mean? I don't know what it means to you. To me, it means that the way you live, people will know of your faith in Christ. They know of your faith by the way you live with other people. And that's true. That's true. Uh, I uh, can't get away from, from God. Paul goes on. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice with your forbearance be known. The Lord is here. The Lord is here, and so he is. Well, now we think, well, yeah, we expect to be here with us. What we fail to remember is that God is always with us. You have never drawn a breath of life outside the presence of God. You cannot. God is everywhere. He's been with you everywhere you've been. He's been everywhere you will never go. Always. You realize that? Do you ever think of that when you go up in the morning and say your morning prayer that you have slept in the presence of God? That you eat and walk and work and play in the presence of God. He is always there. Always. Uh, Sometimes kind of a sobering thought, isn't it? We can't get away from God. We can. Sometimes we're like think, well, surely there is some place. Maybe a closet that's dark and the door's shut, and I, I can have my own private moment without God. No, no, no. Uh, that's not going to happen. God is always there, always aware of you, loving you, blessing you, seeking to empower you. And that's a scary and a wonderful thought that we are never, ever, ever away from the presence of God. He's always there, always. He never quits. <clears throat> he never turns his back. 
He doesn't give up. He just keeps on loving and blessing. <coughs> the Lord is here. Well, we're just humans. And uh, we have our limitations. Real limitations because of the <coughs> limitation of simply being a temporary person in this form for a short while on this earth for as human. But <coughs> we need to give thought sometimes to things that we sort of dismiss. <coughs> what, what do we think about? What do we understand about God? <coughs> well, I want to share with you what I do and hope maybe it will help you. Uh, what do we know about God? Well, we know that out of God's love is his grace. You know what God's grace means? That means blessings that come to us regardless of the kind of life we're living or what we believe. No matter what you do or say or think or wish, God is aware of it. He's always there. He's always there. Uh, but the thing he keeps on doing is loving and blessing. Blessing. Every person in this world is blessed by God, even those that may not give him thought. But he keeps on loving and keeps on blessing, regardless of how we live. That's God's grace. It's unearned, undeserved. We shouldn't, we haven't done anything. There's no way we can do the right in order to receive that grace. We're going to receive it all our lives, regardless of how we live. God's grace is going to be with us. His presence and his blessings are going to continue even if we're not aware of his blessings. <clears throat> God's grace. It's unconditional. You don't have to do anything. You can't do enough to earn it. It's just there. God gives it to us. Unconditionally. Then we have understand God's mercy. But it is conditional. A mercy to forgive our sins is conditional. <clears throat> and Jesus speaks of it twice that I want to recall for you. Once is in the Lord's Prayer when he says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Also translated, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, every disciple church I've ever been in somehow always uses debts and debtors. I, uh, I think I figured out why. We can sort of put aside those trespasses we're allowed out, but debts are always with. We understand debts, and so we're going to ask forgiveness of our debts <clears throat> as we forgive others. That's Jesus from the Lord's Prayer. Another time he said, if you forgive, God will forgive you. So God not only offers us <coughs> his, his grace, but also the opportunity for us to have our sins forgiven if we are forgiving. It's up to us. It's up to us. Most of all, though, out of God's love and the grace and the mercy that's available, it may be the greatest gift of all, and that is God's peace, the peace of God. Have you ever thought about the fact that we can live the, the peace of God? Listen to these words again from Paul's letter to the Philippians. And... Uh, Request be made known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your heart and your mind 
in Christ Jesus. You understand that? The peace that is beyond our understanding, so great and powerful enough that we can live in it. Imagine living your life in the peace of God, knowing that as humans, good things and not so good things happen. But underneath us, the peace of God. You can relax in the love of God and know his peace. What a wonderful gift it is. Oh, God gives us his grace, forgiveness, and he gives us this peace. I want to break a 70-year personal record at this time. I've been in the ministry 70 years, 41 as a pastor of a congregation, and since retirement I've preached in them, preaching, uh, in them for churches looking for preachers. I've held uh, what they call preaching missions. They used to call them revivals. That name kind of lost favor. Now it's preaching missions. I did a couple of those. And probably a good thing they changed the name because when I got through preaching that week, I wasn't sure there'd be any reviving going on. <laughs> I tried. All right. Oh, mercy, peace, grace, all of it from God our Father. Now, tradition I'm going to break is in those 70 years I preached a lot of sermons. I don't even like to think about how many there were and the content of so many of them. And there were often times when I knew while I was preaching that I needed some help. But I don't know whether I didn't know how to ask for it or more likely I was too egotistical to ask for it. And so I just bumbled on. But this morning, I need your help. I'm serious, sincere about the fact that I need your help. It won't cost you anything. You don't have to do anything physically. You don't have to say anything. It's just going to be kind of a a mental exercise, and for that reason, I request every person to join me in answering a question. I'm going to ask myself the question, the question that I'm going to request you ask yourself. All right? The question is this, remembering all that God does for us and has done and is doing and will always do. Remember his, his grace and his mercy and his peace, the great love that he has for us. Remember all that. <clears throat> the question is, when we think of all that God offers us, all this. The question I am going to ask myself, and I request you ask yourself the question. Whether you ever share it with anyone or not, it's up to you. <clears throat> the question is, in the light of all that God has done for us, I'm going to ask myself, request you ask you, in the light of God's love, what am I offering God? 